welcome to some homeschooling. Now get a notepad and pen, settle down, stop picking your nose, don't eat your packed lunch beforehand, and pin your ears back and listen. Welcome to Bike Social, and part one is going to be aerodynamics. Now that may sound complicated for some, but it's not, it's really simple. And I hugely apologise for anybody who works in Formula One, or anybody who's got any knowledge of aerodynamics, because I'm going to bring this down to a really simple level. All too often, journalists like myself get overcomplicated. What I'm going to try and do is really bring it down a level, so it's easy to understand. So, to my amazing diagram. Square car, first pointy car. When the car is moving forward, the wind is hitting a large surface area. It has to go around the square car, poor aerodynamics. Pointy car, the wind hits the front of the car, it goes round the car, improved aerodynamics. If you dive into a swimming pool, you usually don't create much of a splash. If you dive belly first and do a massive belly flop, you cause a giant splash. That's very, very simple aerodynamics. So how does this translate to motorcycles? Well, in a car, it doesn't matter on your physicality. It doesn't matter how tall you are or how wide you are or what you're wearing. We're on a motorcycle, the rider dramatically affects the aerodynamics. And this is on naked bikes, touring bikes, and sports bikes. So let's look at an almost worst case scenario. You're a larger rider in bulky kit riding a naked bike like Honda CB1000. It's 70 miles an hour, the wind is hitting you. You're pulling on the bars, it's causing slight discomfort because that sits down on your spine, which then sits down on the seat. If you ride a naked bike for a long period of time, sometimes journalists and test riders will complain about discomfort of the seat. It's not so much that the seat is uncomfortable, it's that the wind is hitting you, which means you're pushing down on your butt, which means you're causing pressure on the seat. If we extend the speed and increase the speed, the pressure obviously increases, so does the discomfort. But now we actually cause the bike to sit slightly and we cause the front to raise slightly. So we're pulling the forks out the stanchion. So we're pulling on the bars to stop ourselves flying off the back. Now a simple way of getting around this is fitting a screen or some genuine bodywork. Another way is to crouch down and get out the wind slightly and another way is your different kit. This is why on a sports bike, when you're tucked in, in slippery levers is the ultimate aerodynamic position. When we test bikes for top speed, down a runway which is two miles long and we fit a GPS, we can see a 15 to 20 mile an hour difference between sat bolt upright and being tucked in. And then we really, really have to be aware of anything that is sticking out. If you speak to uh, TT riders, for example, who spend a lot of their time tucked in, flat out, they'll have thinner knee sliders, they'll change the bodywork slightly to reduce the amount of wind pressure on their shoulders, they'll change the seat hump, different crash helmets affect in different ways, screens increase and decrease and little fins. And this is all to make the rider more comfortable when he's flat out and to make sure that they're not using more power for the same speed. Because as wind pressure increases on the rider and on the bike, you have to increase the power and the RPM. This increases your fuel that you're using, which means you reduce your range and you reduce your miles per gallon. A very, very simple way of looking at this is electric bikes are struggling with range. This is a key important of electric bikes, is they all want range. The slippery and more aerodynamic the bodywork, the more you stay tucked in, the more the range increases. And we see this with adventure bikes, we see this with naked bikes, and we see this with sports bikes. If you add luggage, you add a pillion, you make the bike more unaerodynamic, you will make the bike use more fuel, which will reduce your range. And whilst we're on the subject of adding pillions and luggage, you also have to think about the wind pressure that is hitting the panniers, the screen, the rider, and your rucksack. Try riding with a giant rucksack, like a big army Bergen, that's full to the top above your crash helmet. Get to 70 miles an hour, and it's agony. 
because it's acting like a giant sail. You're pulling on the bars, you're pulling the forks out of the stanchion, which is causing a little bit of instability. It's hurting your butt because you're pushing on the seat, which is pushing on the shock. Remove the giant rucksack, spread the load, put a tank bag on, much, much easier. You've got nothing on your back. You haven't got that giant sail and the wind is, the tank bag can act on a naked bike as a little bit of bodywork that you can sit behind. Again, when you go into the TT or you're going touring and you add everything to your panniers and your sleeping bag and your kettle and your extra bottles, just think about the wind pressure at 70, 80 miles an hour, especially when you're going into a 40 or a 50 mile an hour headwind. Think about how that's going to affect the bike. If you're riding on your own, would a tail pack or a top box be better than side panniers? All these little things matter. Next time in part two, we're going to look at aerodynamic wings and how they affect the bike and how they affect the handling.